uh, if not, perhaps we could persuade you to stay just a little bit longer and uh, talk a little bit about the school accreditation ratings. Um, this is an action item, and uh, I will ask for a motion at this time. I move that the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 approve the school accreditation ratings as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Dr. Dattery, please. <clears throat> Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to now share with you about our school plan types and um, the different uh, categories that each of our schools have been provided by the state. And so again, I already shared a little bit around this to, uh, starting in 2009. Um, and so I don't need to probably spend any more time talking with you about that. The, the performance indicators are really the same as it is for the district. It's, no, it's not any different. Um, it's about academic achievement, the academic longitudinal growth, the growth gaps, as well as for high school, post-secondary and workforce readiness. It is important to know, I'm gonna just share a little bit with you, is this is the same as in the district, but at the school level, um, we know that now we are talking smaller numbers than it is across a district. And so it's important to understand when looking at these different categories, um, the scores of different students may count as few as seven times or as many as 20 times, and it could be even up to 27 times in a high school with that fourth category. So one student could count that many times in this model. Um, and so if a student is, just kind of as an example, if you might be a fifth grade student, if I'm a fifth grade student who scored at the proficient level, proficient level in reading, writing, and math, I am not an English learner, I am not, um, you know, in a free and reduced lunch status, I am not minority, I do not have a catch-up category that I spoke of before, then I'm, I would be just counted those seven times, one for each of those areas, seven different times, six different times in, in some years. However, if I am a fifth grade student who is in that catch-up, I'm not proficient, I need to catch up, I'm counting there, um, and maybe if it's in reading, writing, and math, which often does happen, um, maybe an English language learner, a member of a minority group, your score, my score, could count up to 20 times. And like I said, up to 27 then in um, the high school. So it's the way it's calculated and when the numbers are smaller, that very much, that does have um, an effect on that, that system. And so it's, while it is good to be looking at growth, there has been um, some conversation about how that is calculated. It's also good to know that because of this academic growth, because of the different fourth category at high school, the top three categories are only at elementary and middle. Academic achievement counts for 25% of a school plan type. 50% then is on growth. And then 25% is on growth gaps. So heavily weighted in growth, but again, that same student is counting in all those categories. And then for high schools, because they add the fourth category, 15% is on academic achievement. 35% on growth, 15% on growth gaps, and then 35% on the post-secondary and workforce readiness. So pretty heavily weighted there in that area. So District 6 accredited schools based on the plan type that each school has been assigned by the state. Again, we could uh, go a plan type lower, but we cannot go a plan type higher unless you go through an appeal process with the state. Based on each school's attainment on the performance indicators, the Colorado Department of Education makes the recommendation as to whether each school should have a performance plan. There's just four plan types now. Performance plan, improvement plan, priority improvement plan, or turnaround plan. Um, for the complete list of all the schools, you can see um, in their two-year history, their two-year um, look, you can see that in your board packet. I'm very pleased, again, to be able to share with you, and I was able to share with principals on Monday night. I get to share this with all of you and make this public. And um, we've been celebrating. Out of the 30 total schools, charter and non-charter schools, 18 of our schools improved either one full category up or within a category. That is significant. Last year, we had only nine schools make that kind of growth. This year, nine schools alone made a full jump from one plan type to another. 
so just the work that they've been doing they were so so proud of the work that they've been doing and it's it's not just a one year event i mean they work and they do you know putting systems in place and and working um to help their teachers you know to feel that sense of efficacy really with each of the kids that they work with so it's a continual process and even some of the schools that dropped they were some of them were just devastated when they got these and but yet it was might have just been two points or um, just very minimal we know that um, a couple of our schools did drop two schools is all that dropped from improvement to priority improvement they've gone back and forth over the years um, very challenging um, demographics and they just but they were like no excuses we're going to keep working this it's just about growing kids that are sitting in our seats in front of us right now and we'll we'll uh, continue and because so much of this is placed on growth they continue to work with students and um, are moving them up so i'm just get to be the messenger for some really great news for for our principals and our teachers so i want to just run through very quickly with you and give a little shout out for our schools um, the highest accreditation as i shared with you is at performance um, for schools, it is our recommendation um, of the administrative team as well as uh, CDEs that each of these schools' performance, um, these schools be accredited with the performance plan. Uh, the district schools with this plan type, as you can see, are up here Dos Rios and Jackson. Both went from improvement to performance this year. And so that was wonderful, wonderful news. They were absolutely thrilled. Um, as well as Montfort McAuliffe have been at performance. They stayed at performance. Chapel and Winograd, same. Um, they've been at performance, stayed at performance. Frontier, Union Colony, University have all been at performance and they stayed at performance. And another significant um, shout out for Westridge Academy. They went from priority improvement to performance this year. We were just so, we just really celebrated with them. It was very exciting. The second category, as I mentioned, is an improvement plan. Um, the schools, uh, Hyman has been at improvement. They stated improvement. Both Meeker and Madison went from priority improvement to improvement. Um, Romero Academy, that you know was um, consolidated, was East Memorial that was in turnaround, now in improvement. And uh, Romero went from priority improvement to improvement. So again, two more schools that went up and into the improvement category. Heath was also at priority improvement last year. They are now at improvement, so we celebrate with them as well. And then our high schools are in improvement is Greeley Central, Northridge, and Greeley West. All three of our high schools. Uh, these, these schools receive a level of just guidance from district leadership. Um, the monitoring is, is not uh, monitoring around performance obviously and then improvement plan type is not as um, heavily you know involved nor not only at a local level or at a state level a little different with priority improvement or turnaround schools but at the improvement or performance level uh, just that guidance being that support continuing to support them in the work that they're doing because obviously some things are moving in the right direction so then with priority improvement, where there is a little bit more support, um, both from a district level as well as from the um, CDE, this is um, the folks, the <coughs> schools that are in this category, Centennial, Martinez, Maplewood, Scott, and Shashin. Um, I already mentioned a little bit on Maplewood. They have been um, doing some really good work. Scott and Shashin, or Scott went up in their uh, percentage points as well as Martinez and I have that complete uh, listing here for you. So we were very pleased um, for, with their work. Martinez did not, I, I apologize. Centennial did, as well as Scott. And then um, in addition to that, Brentwood, Jay Evans, and Franklin um, are in priority improvement, and we know Franklin was in turnaround last year as well, and so they've moved up into priority improvement. So moving in the right direction, they are still on that clock um, that we've talked to you about last year, but going in the right direction, so that's good. And then Union Colony uh, K-6 is in priority improvement um, as well. We do have one school uh, this year for the first time, Engage Online Academy is in um, the category of turnaround. It is their first year. Um, they, we will be providing them quite a bit more and have been providing them quite a bit more support and um, guidance as they work through this and think about some of the practices and, and implementation um, steps that they will make in order to move out of that. As you know, um, their uh, Engage Online Academy serves 
a very diverse group of students. And um, so it's just really about managing that diversity um, in an online setting, which is very different, as we know, um, to be able to meet the needs of kids, particularly those that need significant amount of support just to attend um, to the work as well as um, academically. We absolutely believe that they can, they can and will move out of turnaround status in this coming year, given the work. And so with that, um, I will just close by sharing with you, this is the accreditation timeline, and I do apologize that the timeline was incorrect in your board um, packet. That was my error. Um, the timeline is about the same, but I had the wrong years. And this is just really provided to us from um, Colorado Department of Ed. So you can see when we are submitting our ratings um, and um, approve those plan types, then with priority improvement, as I said, as well as turnaround improvement plans as a result of this accreditation um, assignment, uh, they get a lot more overview. And so they are, every one of those plan types that are in priority improvement or turnaround receives um, high level scrutiny, if you will, and review from the state level. We have to make any necessary revisions that they provide to us and then everything gets turned back in, in April 5th, on a, by April 15th. Um, and then they are all published on School View for the greater community um, by end, sometime in the summer of 2015. <coughs> so that is the timeline that we, that we follow and our schools have been um, moving right along. In fact, I will be bringing to you those school plan types and the district improvement plan, or the uh, school improvement plan and district improvement plans in the coming month. So with that, I would um, answer any questions that you may have before your... Ms. Solis. Just want to give a shout out to Jefferson. I know that they have a lot of challenges there too and to see them go from improvement to performance, I mean kudos to all of them on the staff and, and, and the students. Yes. Thank you. I am so sorry I forgot to mention that. Okay. They've just done so much. So you're absolutely right. Dr. Richard Just a request for some additional information. I know that um, the state has now moved to one improvement or one rating for a K through 12 school. But yes. since they do actually have different criteria and different weights, could you give us the uh, a breakout I can later on uh -huh. for the high schools sure. separate? Okay, that would I can be great. And uh, once again, you know, this, this is good news for District 6 and it's good news for the community, but it's really good news <laughs> for our students to see this kind of, of moving up and I, would attribute it back to some of the things that you mentioned earlier as to why why is this happening and that's that's important thank you thank you no other board comments the only comment i have i guess is in association with engage online academy and i think one of the things we look at there is innovation and and trying some things that maybe aren't frequently done in other places and we're trying to reach a population perhaps in a way that isn't frequent. So I guess one of the features is we, we do now provide a campus, a place to make contact. Can you say if that's been a, a component of some of this adjustment? Absolutely. In fact, we've reflected and it's not about making any excuses, so I don't want it to no, sound like that. It's just, yeah, the year started differently, you know, last year than it did this year, and not the least of which is just having that placed in order to be able to meet face-to-face -face with a number of students who need that kind of adult support academically, behaviorally, keep them on, you know, going and on target, um, and, and having that, you know, that school space in order to do that it was not present the year prior as it was this year. Um, as well as just the model and refining that and being able to, like you said, um, it's a very different, innovative way of, in which to, to address what some, once some students need. They choose an alternative path, you know, such as a non-traditional path. And um, it's very suited for them, but it doesn't mean that it's easy to be able to make that work for them. So they are working, kind of talking, collaborating, seeing what other online schools do. And in a lot of ways, people look to engage, how are you doing this? How are you making that work? So um, in addition, I will tell you the other significant change that they made was in their curriculum choice. Again, um, that being a difference that they knew they needed to make. And, and Dagan back in the uh, school board visit that we had, he alluded to some of those significant changes that they did make. And the curriculum choice, it was not the best choice, uh, the Aventa that we went with last year. Making that change to, change to Edgenuity and kind of looking at it as a mid-year point right now 
they're seeing much more success with students and keeping on track and being able to provide them better feedback and ongoing support so that has made a positive difference of the you know so far halfway through this year so thank you for asking well, keep everybody pointed in the same direction with our thanks please yes thank you I will appreciate it so roll call Ms. Brin. Mr. Aye. Mr. Hayfley. Aye. Mr. Hall. Aye. Mr. Lydia. Aye. Dr. Richard. Aye. Mr. Richardson. Aye. Mrs. Solis. Aye. And the motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. Well, that concludes this evening's meeting. This uh, meeting is adjourned.